a mixture of that. Right now, you had that. Come on, guys. For next week. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes you could, you could only go back and forth with a floor supporting system. There's a rail underground, just like a, some sort of attachment. You, just, you can only move the two uh, back and forth. Uh, other two, uh, fluoroscopy tube, for example, is built underneath the extra table. So when mm -hmm. you use uh, a floor procedure, other uh, floor or extra tube is built within a mobile device called CR. And the reason why it's called CR because it's shaped like a C. Very technical of us. Um, <laughs> And we use that mainly in a lot of uh, um, procedure, especially in surgery. It's a big portable device you take into the surgery room and they put a, uh, a cover on it and for sterilizations and then you do your floor procedure. Here's some of the images, uh, ceiling and versus floor support. Again, the ceiling, actually two is part of some sort of something. As mentioned, like a telescoping bike, you just go up and down, and then you can move it in any direction. When it's a floor mounted, you can always slide back and forth. Uh, it fills in in terms of where you can manipulate the X-ray tube. Uh, does the X-ray tube on the on the floor one does it move outwards and inwards too, or uh, it, it does move outward and inward? But, but like the, the X-ray tube, does it move like out like sideways and then back, or not? You can swing it. Oh, okay. Into, but you can't like if you let the patient move somewhere, you can't move it. It's very limited. Uh, this. This type of system support mainly for up by chest x ray. Um, the gel, when I work in, is like this. It's, it doesn't go anywhere, you just go back and forth. Um, but it's usually for chest x ray, it's a standard 72 inches. It does, so I don't really move to it on I just move it up and down to adjust the height. And that's pretty much it. And everything else, it just stays down. And this is mainly used for like limited room where the space is limited. More picture of the four two ceiling suspensions. I mentioned like a telescope. Why is that different? I think I showed you this image before. The two things you notice most when you walk into the next room would be the extra table and the extra tube. And uh, the exposure area is in the same room, but there's a, a dividing area to prevent from scattering radiation reaching you. And there's usually a window that's that line so you can see the patient during the exposure. Uh, top of x ray tubes. Tube can be built completely in case in the metal or in a pilot glass envelope. Uh, this is why I see mostly common, but a lot of tubes go into metal. And it's, they call it glass envelope, even though it's no longer glass, it's just an envelope. Um, this is a diagram of the extra tube itself. It's connected to the collimations where the lights do represent the x-ray. It's coming up from the tube, the anode, uh, reading out and interacting with the patient. Okay, two constructions. Again, uh, this is just basic review from 146. This is where we cross path. <coughs> the basic component of the two construction 
uh, would be the housing. It's where they replace the extra tube inside the metal housing. Sometimes called a tube assembly or just housing. And then we have a envelope. And this envelope is usually um, depending on what kind of manufacturer could be glass or just metal in case. Here I have a picture of a glass vacuum envelope. And then of course the inside the envelope would be the cathode and the anode side. That's where the production pressures occur. Okay, the housing. Oh, two housing is designed to protect and control uh, uh, excess radiation <laughs> and water pressure. The housing uh, control any rate of where the X-ray comes out. The only part where useful X-ray beam should come out will be the window or the port. That's where it should come out. Any place that the X-ray is exiting besides the window or the port would be for us leakage radiation, and we don't want that. Leakage radiation or radiation that escapes other than the window. By regulation, the tube cannot emit more than 100 millirankin per hour at a distance of one meter with a 75 to 80 kV setting. Yeah. Can you repeat that? By regulations, the tube, the liquid radiation cannot be more than 100 millirankin at a distance of one meter with a setting of 75 to 80 kV. I'm sorry, one more time. Is that going to be on the... Well, it's on. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Sorry. Except for the 75. Except for the 75. I'm just expanding my time. Thank you. And the two, the, and the main housings uh, has oil surrounding it. Uh, the purpose of the oil is for health insulations uh, and thermal cushion because uh, the production of heat generates a lot of... Uh, the production of x-rays. The production of x-rays generate a lot of heat. Uh, so the oil help dissipate the heat more fast and more efficient. Any questions? So here is the um, diagram of the metal housing. And within the metal housing are the extra two. The only part where the used beam should come out would be the port. Interacting with the patient and then the film, any place where x rays coming out, there will be radiations. Okay, here's the animation. The two housing is generally made of um, cast steel with lead lines surrounding it. That's a precaution to protect any radiation. So we have a couple extra tubes inside that one three or nine. Just laying around. And we have this? Mm -hmm. uh, just a cross section of the metal housing. Here we have the cathode anode within the envelope. Um, put it in the center. This will support the window. So it's coming out. And that other apparatus device. <coughs> okay, the envelope. I should change this slide. Um, glass envelope or metal envelope is mainly composed of pyrex glass, I mean pyrex metal or metal. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a pyrex metal? Yeah, pyrex. Yeah, the cooking wheel, pyrex. That's why I think of pyrex. Pyrex is glass. Um, 
um, within the envelope is a complete vacuum. There's no air molecule in it. The reason being is that when the electrons travel from the cathode side to the anode side, we want it to a uh, straight projectile without any uh, disruptions. If they interact with the air molecule, those electrons may uh, move into a dif different direction, mm -hmm. uh, causing the production of to be more inefficient. So within the envelope, which is a vacuum. So how do they just suck the air out? Or? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to do that. <laughs> And again, uh, oil surrounding the uh, envelope because it's inside the particular metal housing, and the metal housing has oil all, all around it to absorb and heat. Mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be go from the cathode to the anode. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, the parts are inside the envelope, the cathode side. The cathode side would be just a negative charge side of the x-ray tube. This is where we get the source of the electrons. To produce X-ray photons. The main component of the cathode side will be the filament and the focusing cup. Again, it is negatively charged since it's on the cathode side. Uh, thermal emission occur uh, too from the filament. Um, this is the picture of the cathode anode. So here's uh, the focusing cup and within the, the filament, and it's really close to the anode side, which is mainly made of the disc, <laughs> the tungsten disc. And the electron uh, coming out from um, the cathode side through, through process of thermal emission, going at very rapid speed interacting at the anode side, tungsten disk, and then with the electron interacting with the electro, um, electron from the disk, that produces extra photons. Mm. And it's about an inch apart. Oh, yeah, the filament. Uh, filament is where I mentioned the amount of emission occurred. Uh, when we put the sun through that and the filament, just like it could doesn't like ball filament, but just one bigger, stronger than durable. Um, when it starts to, um, the electron flow through, it starts to glow very hot. It then produ produces a, what we call space charge, which is just a cloud of electrons. As the space charge continues, these electrons will escape from the filament. The escape electron will be the projectile electrons. It go from uh, the uh, filament straight to the anode side at a very, very high speed. The filament is made of a metal called tungsten. Just like any filament, uh, every time we use a light bulb, when we use a lot, what happens to the filament? Burns out. It burns out and fails. Same thing with the x-ray. You know, uh, that's pretty much the number one cause of the tube failure is the vibrations and the brittle of the, uh, the filament. Okay. The more we use it, the more thinner it gets, and the more brittle and it breaks, and then we replace it. And which costs a couple thousand dollars just to cost someone to change it. There you go. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, in today's uh, x-ray tube, there's usually uh, two uh, different size filaments. One's large and one's small. It's sometimes referred as a dual focusing tube. And the reason why we have two different size filament is mainly for different body parts and, those, and, and for uh, resolution as well. The smaller filament generally give you more detail because of it being it's much closer to, each, uh, to one another. With the smaller filament, however, you can only have some setting um, um, of MA to go through it. And generally, you can only have a setting of 200 MA or less. Anything more than that would um, cost a lot of wear and tear to the small filament. Some textbooks would put down 300. Uh, I go by conservative, 200. And the larger filament is used mainly for bigger body parts, such as the abdomen, skull, small filaments, mainly used for like extremities, like foot, knee, and uh, <coughs> the benefit of using a larger filament is that it could withstand high heat, so we could um, use high MA station and longer exposure time as well. The downside of using a large filament that the uh, resolution does decrease by a little. I mean, from, a, from the eyes point of view, you can't really see it, but in the laboratory experiment, you could, if you're taking the same picture uh, and do a quality test, uh, there's a, a degrade in resolution. So sharpness does decrease, but it gives you higher long exposure. That's pretty much the difference between small and large filaments. Small filaments, very detailed, usually for small body parts. Large filaments, usually for bigger parts, um, such as abdomen. Any questions? Here's an image of uh, your filament. One large and one small. <coughs> when, we large, when we select, like I said, uh, 400 MA stations, the focus bar selector will automatically switch from large to small. Uh, that's in the diagram when you look at it last week. Right. The uh, two different currents, that's one you guys be aware of. Uh, one's filament current and one's tube current. Filament current flows um, through the uh, generator uh, from the filament and um, filament transformer. Uh, uh, delivered to the filament itself, uh, supported by a step-down transformer. And this is how we get our thermonic emissions. And the filament current is measured in amperes. Tube current will be electrons of current flowing across from the, to the X-ray tube the cathode to the anode through the process of thermonic emissions that were all those escape electrons. Tube current measured in milliampers, MA. That's why when we do our technique selection, we major measure our technique selection in terms of tube current, not so much as filament current. Changing MA selection to current would um, adjust the amount <coughs> of current, so the current will adjust to give you that amount of MA selection. So that's the main difference between filament current and tube current. Okay, the other part of the <coughs> cathode side would be the focusing cup. This is generally made of molybdenum. I think I pronounced that right. Or nickel. Molybdenum. Molybdenum. <laughs> uh, the purpose of the focusing cup is to concentrate the amount of the electrons that are about to escape um, on the counter side to the other side uh, a very narrow path. Without the focusing cup, those uh, 
electrons that are made in, in form of thermal emission will just go in every direction. <clears throat> so the is located inside that book. <laughs> so electrons are negative. Focus simply on negative. So it causes all those electrons to uh, come close together because they're trying to escape. So it's negative and negative. So they have to all compress. As they're compressing, they escape. Just moving quick projectile over to the other side. And then, um, then they produce use, use waves that can come out. Without it, all these electrons are just flying in all directions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to go too fast. It's like almost the same thing as a collimator, right? So like in a smaller bunch? Um, it's because they're both negatively charged, let's push them together. Yeah. And that's why it makes it tighter. But the color machine just adjusts the light through, but the, oh. this, it, it compresses together. Oh. Because it's, uh, it's like having two negative, negative it, it, they have to go nowhere. So it wants to be get so close to your jet, once it reach out, it just goes straight. Okay. Okay, the anode side. This is the positive side that goes to, it's maybe made of a big giant dust. And this is where X-ray photons are produced. So this is where we get the source of the uh, X-rays. The X-ray photons. Uh, and the other side attract the incoming electrons from the cathode. Um, after the in interactions um, with the tungsten disk, it then produces X-ray photons. Or the, or the disc itself can be a stationary disc, or you would actually never do disc like that, or rotation anode, which is what we see normally common see in the uh, in the hospital, the rotation disc. The normal materials on the other side that may would, that support the disc would be made out of the tungsten, which uses the top layer, supported by molybdenum, <laughs> graphite, and copper. What was that second one again? What's <laughs> <laughs> smaller than What is smaller than What is smaller Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was you, man. Where's your mind at? <laughs> On the weekend or what? Such a professional. <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> so here is a stationary disc. Uh, with the tungsten on top of the system bed. Uh, so it's not working. So the problem with this is that all the heat is um, generated in one surface area as you produce the electron coming in. Uh, it's usually in, using very low X-ray exposure. Um, quite a few dental unit has them because they don't make a lot of exposure. <coughs> um, the rotating disc, the bank of ha having a rotation disc is that the electron from come from cathode doesn't strike in one area. So it spread out all the heat in all, all, all of the surface. So it can hang with that more heat and could produce more x-ray. And it's support by copper. Uh, stationary anode using dental x ray, as mentioned earlier, and some sort of x ray machines where high tube current and power is not really required. With a stationary anode, um, it generally produces what we call large focus spots, 
focus spot is where the beam's coming out. That's the, uh, this point of uh, X-ray photons is coming out. Do I get them up? Uh, and they, there too. A larger focus spot. With large focus spot, you need density low resolution because a larger focus is that the, the beam is diverging, so it's spread out uh, more. The more diversion is, the lower the resolution is. That's where a focus spot is. Focus spot is the point where X ray is emitting. Uh, a larger focus is the largest diverging possible. Large diversion beams, lower resolution. The advantage of having a rotating anode disk is that heat dissipate over the different area, so it can stay more heat. And the tungsten also itself is a very good conductor in terms of heat conducting heat. It's, uh, it takes heat and dissipates the heat even fast. Uh, the layers and the rotating anodes, the top layer is made of tungsten because that's the metal choice to produce x rays, to use for producing of x ray and then we have molybdenum, <laughs> and then graphite, and then support by a column. <coughs> and usually the tungsten also mix with other alloy too. Sometimes you see a tungsten uranium alloy. But the main component is tungsten. Do you mean main um, alloy because it's on top and there's more of it? Well, yeah, because it's the top there. Where the production, the electron will interact with, with the tungsten uh, electrons, and then that's where we produce the X-ray. Is there more of it too, though? Is no. it bigger, right? The tungsten. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's spread out over the entire disk. The top smaller. layer is the tungsten, and then supported by the other. Mm -hmm. Are we have this? Okay. Why tungsten? Well, because they have a high atomic number, which is number seventy-four. Uh, this high atomic number is efficiency in terms of X-ray production. And now the factor of using tungsten, besides it's rarely available, is that I have high melting point. As I mentioned, the production of X-ray generally of heat. This high melting point for tungsten is about 3400 degrees Celsius. And also I have high heat conductivity, absorb the heat easily, and release the heat fast. 